In the moonlight, two slaves, Inkasi and Karo, hatched a daring escape. Karo, we can't let our unborn child grow in chains. We must escape this life of chains. Yes, Nkasi. But how do we do it? The village is heavily guarded and the guards will kill us if we try to escape. We flee this night. It's a new moon and all of town will be celebrating. The guards will not be as alert, Nkasi schemed. Night fell. Silently they moved through the village, avoiding the watchful eyes of guards. A rustle of leaves and the soft crunch of footsteps echoed their passage. In the cover of night, they encountered a group of guards. Halt! Who is there? said the guards. Nkasi, quick-witted and determined, engaged the guards in a fierce battle. The clash of blades was replaced by the muffled thuds of bodies hitting the ground. We need to move swiftly. Our freedom depends on it. They navigated dense forests and crossed rivers. Hunger gnawed at their stomachs, but the fire of hope fueled their steps. Finally, after days that felt like endless nights, they reached the outskirts of a new village. You come seeking a safe place? said the elder of this new village. Ankasi, catching his breath, replied, We come seeking a life without chains. Life without chains, you say? Well, in this village, freedom comes at a price, said the elder. We have nothing but the clothes on our backs, said Nkasi. Unknown to Nkasi and Karo, this land had a rule. Any child who came in from fleeing slaves is automatically the property of the king, and the gods would decide their fate. Village elder, with a sly grin. Money may not be your only currency. We're a rich village, but we have other needs. Karo, protective of Nkasi. What do you mean? Village elder, eyeing Karo. We demand a different payment. We want your unborn child as a price for your freedom. Nkaisi, outraged. We won't trade our child for freedom. The village elder replied. Then you can return to the darkness you fled. Karo, defiant. We won't be slaves to any king, new or old. Angry at the insolence, they were brought before the king. The king roared. So you resist our terms? Freedom is never free. Nkasi, with determination. We may not have riches, but we have our dignity. We won't bow to such cruelty. King, with a sinister smile. Dignity won't feed your child. It seems you have a choice to make. After a moment of contemplation, perhaps there's a compromise. Give us your child, and in return we grant you freedom. However, we won't separate you now. Let the child grow among you until their 18th birthday. Then, the child becomes our property. If you refuse, then we will have no choice than to return you in chains to where you fled, the king said. Nkasi and Karo agreed reluctantly, seeing they had no choice. Nkasi remembered what they had fled from. He too was forcibly separated from his mother. When he was just five years, raiders attacked his village. His mother desperately called out to him amidst the chaos, but their paths were forcibly separated. The heart-wrenching cries of his mother echoed in the air as the raiders took him away, never to see his mother again. Nkasi grew up in captivity, where he met Karo. Nkasi and Karo's connection deepened. On a particularly dark night, Nkasi described the rhythmic beats of drums from his village celebrations, lamenting, I miss the lively dances and the warmth of those nights. Karo, with a smile, responded, I remember my mother teaching me traditional dances under the moonlight. It feels like another lifetime now. Nkasi chuckled. A fellow slave managed to sneak in a harmonica. Ankasi, with a glimmer of joy, played tunes from his village, remarking, This melody takes me back home. Karo, with a soft sway, added a touch of dance, turning their small corner into a haven of fleeting escape. Unfortunately, Nkasi was caught playing the harmonica and beaten, but Nkasi and Karo's bond grew stronger. They shared stories, dreams, and even found moments of laughter amidst the hardship. One day as they worked side by side, Nkasi noticed a change in Karo and asked, Are you okay, Karo? 
A hesitant smile played on Caro's lips as she whispered, I think I might be with child. The news brought a mix of emotions, uncertainty, fear, but also a glimmer of joy. As Caro's pregnancy progressed, they determined to escape. And now they have. But they have to give up their child when she turns 18. Months passed, and Caro gave birth to a very beautiful girl called Nia. They trained Nia to be courageous and bold. And they showered her with love and care. Years flew by, and Nia grew into a spirited young girl. One day the chief priest, captivated by Nia's beauty, approached the king with a deceitful plan. My king, the prophecy foretells greatness in the union of Nia and me. The child born of the slaves should not just be the village property, but she should be my bride. The gods have spoken, the king intrigued. What does this mean? The chief priest continued. When she turns 18, the heavens themselves decree that she should become my bride. It is the only path to prosperity for our people. King swayed by the promise of prosperity, so be it. The God's will must not be questioned. The king informed Nia's parents who were saddened but couldn't break their bond. As Nia grew and her parents got older, little did she know of the secret pact that bound her fate to the chief priest. On the eve of her 18th birthday, Nia overheard hushed conversations among the villagers. Intrigued, she sought answers from her parents. Mother, father, why do the villagers speak of some union involving me and the chief priest. Nkasi and Karo, with a heavy heart, revealed the truth about the promise made to the king. Nkasi replied with a heavy heart, We made a promise so we could have a place to stay and raise you. The king promised no harm would come to you. Nia angry and confused, and handing me off to the old chief priest is good enough, right? We had no choice, Karl said amidst tears. Nia, shocked and hurt, struggled to accept the reality. Underneath the moonlit sky, Nia sat and thought about what to do next. I can't bear to become the wife of that old witch doctor. I must escape. And so the next morning, Nia embarked on her journey, and as she walked through the dense forest, she encountered an elderly woman with a weathered face and kind eyes. Child, destiny is not always written in stone. Find solace in the village beyond the hills. They will help you. As Nia arrived in the neighboring village, the curious gazes of the villagers fell upon her. They noticed the intricate mark on her arm, a symbol that seemed to shimmer with an otherworldly glow. Whispers rippled through the crowd, questioning why a girl marked by the gods had appeared in their midst. We have to find out why she is here, so we don't attract the wrath of the gods. A villager said, Yes, immediately. Another villager replied, Nia was summoned to the palace. Chief Okechukwu, his brow furrowed with concern, approached Nia with a mix of caution and curiosity. Child, what brings you to our village? And what is the meaning of this mark upon your arm? Nia, her voice steady despite the turmoil within, explained her predicament. She spoke of the deceitful pact and her resolve to forge her own path. After she spoke, the village chief, Okechukwu, gathered the elders for a meeting. We cannot turn away a girl seeking refuge. We must protect her from the clutches of that old witch doctor, Chief Okachukwu declared. Meanwhile, back at home, Nia's parents searched everywhere for her, scared of what the king would do if he found out Nia was missing. News of Nia's disappearance soon reached the chief priest, and he came to Nia's home to ask for Nia. Where is your daughter, Nia? I've heard stories that she has escaped. And you know what that means. You made a promise for your freedom, and you must keep it. The witch doctor said angrily. Inkasi replied, Our daughter will be given to the village as promised. We will find her and do the right thing. The witch doctor, turning to leave. You better keep your word. Days turned to weeks, and Nia was yet to return. The witch doctor was restless. He summoned his spirit guides and made incantations, seeking the whereabouts of Nia. Witch doctor, chanting, Bring her back to me, spirits. She is mine by fate. Nia started having nightmares of strange beasts pursuing her. In one of the dreams, the old priest tried to snatch her away. 
The next day she had a dream, and the witch doctor appeared again, this time asking her to meet him in the heart of Shimbala Forest. Nia, haunted by the nightmares, sought counsel from the village priestess, Nioma. Nioma replied, Child, your dreams are battles fought in the spirit realm. Confront them with courage, go to the heart of the Shimbala Forest and fight your battle. Nia made her way to Shimbala Forest. In the heart of the dense forest, as the moon cast an eerie glow, Nia stood her ground, determined to confront the looming threat of the witch doctor. The air crackled with tension as he emerged from the shadows, draped in ceremonial robes, his eyes glinting with an otherworldly determination. The witch doctor threatened, You cannot escape your destiny, young one. Come willingly, and your suffering shall be lessened. Nia raised her chin defiantly. I won't be a pawn in your games. I choose my own destiny. So be it, the witch doctor growled. As the witch doctor advanced, the priestess stepped forward from the shadows. Nioma intervened. Enough, old one. Your grasp on this girl ends here. The atmosphere thickened with a silent exchange of power between the witch doctor and Nioma. The witch doctor pointed his staff and struck Nia. And she fell under his spell and started to follow him. No, Nia. Focus on your inner strength. Resist him. You have the power to break free from his influence. Nioma screamed. Nia felt a surge of energy within her. I am not bound by fear. I am free, Nia said, finding her voice. Naoma, with a gesture, unleashed a wave of protective energy that encircled Nia. The witch doctor, now weakened, struggled against the unseen force. The witch doctor, outraged, replied, This is not the end. She is marked by destiny. Nioma, with unwavering determination, chanted ancient incantations, weaving a barrier that repelled the witch doctor's malevolent influence. The witch doctor, unable to break through the protective barrier, reluctantly retreated, vanishing into the shadows. Did you enjoy this story? Please like this video and subscribe to support this channel. Thank you for watching.